Good morning, uh, Hope Church. Welcome to your Hope Daily on this Wednesday morning. We're continuing in the book of Hebrews. We're going to look at chapter 3 um, today. Uh, and I know that title might be a bit confronting, um, but of um, are you truly saved? Um, but this passage in Hebrews 3, um, particularly uh, the uh, majority of it, it is talking about a warning uh, about unbelief. Uh, and so that's where I've got my title. And I'll explain a little bit more about that uh, later on. But let me just pray uh, as we come uh, to this uh, passage. Father God, I thank you that you not only give us scripture uh, to encourage us uh, and, and scripture um, that um, just makes us go, wow, uh, who you are, Lord. But you also give us scripture to challenge us and to, to give us surety and confidence uh, in you, Lord. And I just pray today as we look at Hebrews chapter 3 together, uh, whether people are looking at it this morning or this evening or later on, Lord, uh, that you would speak to each one of us um, as we uh, delve into your amazing word, Father. Um, just, Lord, would you speak by your Holy Spirit through me now, in your name. Amen. Amen, guys. So I'm going to read uh, from the NIV version of the Bible. That's the New International Version of the Bible. Um, and I'm going to talk us through this passage uh, this morning or this evening, depending where you are watching. So, verse 1. Therefore, and as Andrew said yesterday, when you get a therefore, it's asking, what is it there for? Well, it's carrying on from yesterday. It was talking about the the weaknesses and the temptations that we can have um, and that Christ kn knows what we go through. He knows the, the temptations we get. So therefore, holy brothers, who share in the heavenly calling, so that's Christians, um, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle, that means one who is sent, and the high priest. So that was like the highest position um, that the Jews knew of. Um, they were like the, the mediator between man and God. Who, so the apostle and high priest whom we confess. So we're saying this is who Jesus is. The apostle, the one who is sent, and the high priest, the mediator between man and God. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, that's God, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus had been found, has been found worthy of greater honour than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honour than the house itself. So Moses was the prophet who was held in the highest regard um, uh, in the in the Jewish faith and, and, and in in amongst the Israelites, um, and this this passage is saying, well, Jesus is even greater than uh, that. Jesus, as God, is the one who actually built uh, this 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 house, um, um, just as and, and and therefore this comparison that the builder of the house is greater than the house itself. So Moses. It says here, so for every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. So Jesus, the Father, is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. And we are his house if we hold on to our courage and hope of which we boast. Uh, so basically here, Moses was a servant in God's house. But actually, Christ is the son over God's house so Christ has a greater position and it says then we are his house so we are the home of of Jesus Jesus lives in us doesn't he when we when we truly be, believe in him and then the end of this verse here links into the next bit so it says if we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast so as in we um trust in the confidence that we have in Christ to the end we are we are truly saved Verse 7, so as the Holy Spirit says, uh, and this bit is a, a passage from Psalm 95, uh, and by the way it says, so as the Holy Spirit says, uh, it is telling us that these words in Psalm 95 that are quoted here are words from the Holy Spirit, not just from man. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me for 40 years, saw what I did, and for 40 years, saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. And I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared an oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. So these verses in this psalm here that are quoted again in Hebrews 3 uh, is talking about the, the Israelite nation, those who 
um, God freed from Egypt uh, and he provided food for them uh, and water in the desert and he was leading to the, them to this promised land um, but they continually tested God as in they didn't trust him uh, even though God had done great things for them they continually um, refused to believe in him they built golden calves they worshipped to the gods they disobeyed his commands and they dishonoured uh, his house um, and it says here they shall never enter my rest those people um, you know they didn't enter the promised land that generation the majority of them um, didn't enter the promised land which was I guess is one term for God's rest they didn't enter the promised land and um, they didn't enter peace with God um, and, and we can also think of this term rest as meaning peace with God now because of our relationship with Christ uh, and also uh, an eternity with Christ um, that we c can have um, and I guess another term f for rest would mean that, that rest as in a Sabbath rest that, that God took. But I think here it's more talking about that they weren't able to go into the promised land and they weren't able to come uh, into true lasting relationship into eternity uh, with with God. Uh, and then carrying on it says, see to it, verse 12, see to it brothers that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily as long as it is as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. Now, just that bit there it is, is saying to us, you know, we need to make sure that we are not pulled away from believing in God as the Israelites did. So, so the Israelites, they allowed themselves to be pulled away. They didn't truly believe in God. They didn't truly believe in him. A little bit of things just pulled them away. Uh, and although they maybe believed in God for a time or had a kind of sense of, yeah, God is real and God is at work, they didn't actually have true faith and belief in him. Uh, a confidence till the end, it just said there, till the end of the confidence we had. They didn't have that. Uh, and that's why they were not able to enter God's rest. They were not, and they were not truly saved. Uh, and so what it's saying is actually to be a Christian means to share in in Christ till the end. It's a confidence that we have right the way through it. It's not something that wavers. Uh, and also this verse 14 here can sometimes tr people have tried to use it to say, oh, you can lose your salvation. You can be a Christian, then you lose it. Um, and then, you know, now you're not saved or even that you lose it and then you gain it back. Well, the Bible uh, in various uh, places um, one of them being John 10, 27 to 29, uh, talks about how, you know, the enemy is not able to snatch anyone from um, the grasp uh, of Christ. Um, basically, so what we see here is that actually there's a, there's a sense of you're either saved or you're not saved. And like the Israelites, we can have this sense of God and maybe we kind of have a thought, oh, I might believe in him. But unless we truly put our confidence in him, not just say the prayer that we, I guess, admit, what you've done wrong, believe and confess and then think, oh, I'll just carry on in life. No, being a Christian requires, it, it's more than that. It, that prayer needs to come with meaning of your heart that you do admit what you've done wrong. You do believe truly in, in Christ and you confess what you've done wrong uh, continually and that you seek to live a life in obedience uh, to God, believing in him at all and having faith in him. That is when you know that you are truly saved. Because as we saw with the Israelites, they, they fell away. When things got a bit tough, they, it, it showed that actually they, they didn't really have a, a true a true faith. Uh, verse 15 says, As has just been said, Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Again, talking about the Israelites. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt and with whom he was angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the desert, and to whom God did swear they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. So un unbelief and, and separation from God eternally uh, is, is those like the Israelites that had a kind of sense of God, a bit of belief, but they weren't truly saved. 
So I want to ask you, I want to challenge you this morning. Did you just kind of say a prayer um, in church one time or at home one time or at a conference? And, and it's kind of like a, you kind of have a sense of well, God is real. You know, he's done some, I think he's done some nice things for me in my life. But I'm not really putting my full faith and, and trust in him. You know, if God looked at my heart, he would know that I'm not really doing that. Not to say that we are perfect in doing this, but when you are truly saved, you will have a desire in your heart. And God sees that, that you are seeking to live for him day after day, that your full faith and your confidence is in him and in him alone. And, you know, that, that grows over time as well. Um, but it's only those who do have that confidence to the end who will um, be, who are truly saved, who are truly Christians, who will um, receive um, eternity with Christ in the presence of the Father. So ch I want to challenge you today, guys. I I'm sorry it's not an easy message. It's a challenge to us, though. Test uh, yourself. Look at your how you live your life. Look at what you've, you know, what you believe in your heart. Is it just a little prayer you said, or is it a true confidence and faith in Christ that you have that will continue to the end, that won't waver, that won't become unbelief, that won't be drawn away um, by the enemy pulling you away? I, I really hope this morning, guys, that that uh, you are in. Uh, the, the former camp that I just said there, that you are truly saved, that your faith and full confidence is in him and in him alone. And then now is the time to test yourself. You know, we, when we look at one another, you know, it, it, it's easy to be fake. And sometimes we don't even um, know other people if they are saved or not, but God knows. God knows your heart. He knows if your faith is true and if it is real. And if you, if you even begin to doubt this morning that it is then maybe it's not and maybe it's time this morning to start that real true faith and confidence in, in God in Christ Jesus who is greater than Moses who's greater than all um, this morning or this evening your your true salvation your true uh, life as a Christian could begin uh, today so guys check it's real trust in him till the end have confidence in him till the end and you will be saved you will be in eternity with him have a great day guys be encouraged but also be challenged um, and may that be an encouragement to us to live out our, our faith daily it's evidence that it's real let me leave with that today guys god bless you have a great day